<sighs> the time has come. Well, technically not yet. Next Monday, December 4th, that's when the time has officially come. There was a banned and restricted update today on the weekly MTG stream. It was hosted by Blake Rasmussen, Andrew Brown, and Dan Muser. They were discussing Modern and Pioneer and the cards that are currently in the format and how those cards are performing. Um, basically what they said was they wanted to hold off after the Pro Tour to see if there would be any sort of evolution in the format to see if anything would change, to see if the play patterns would change. And they've been keeping a close eye on it and they do not think it has. So next Monday, December 4th, there should be some shakeups. Um, these were, these are the exact words. I'll uh, let you listen for yourself. All right, so let's talk more about modern generally. Modern's a very different format than Pioneer. So how do you all think about the philosophy of BNR and modern? So yeah, again, just describing it's sort of in a different spot than in, in Pioneer and Standard. Um, it does get content. We, we have our Modern Horizon sets. We have the Lord of the Rings uh, sets. Um, and again, sort of the same trickle from Standard where the most powerful cards uh, come, come down there. And yeah, it's certainly more powerful than Pioneer. Um, and we're, we're okay with that. We want it to be, you know, different from these, four. each format just has to have its own identity. We want them to maintain their differences. So um, we sort of have been tracking modern since the uh, Pro Tour in Barcelona, Pro Tour mm -hmm. of the Lord of the Rings, um, through the whole regional championship qualifier cycle. Um, and at the time, you know, we, we, we last spoke with you guys about modern. We were saying, hey, we're going to keep an eye on these Lord of the Rings cards, mm -hmm. um, the Bow Masters, the, the One Ring, um, the Black Red Evoke deck, you know, the time Tron was doing well, Rhinos, all this stuff. And um, since then, we've, you know, seen not much has changed since that event. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, we gave it a little bit of time to see if, uh, you know, Black Red Evoke deck won the, the Pro Tour. Can the format evolve? But really, more people just started playing Black Red <laughs> Evoke yep. deck. Um, you know, cards like Fury, uh, subsidized on sort of both ends with uh, you're not dead already, I think is, uh, and, and those card variants, the, the one mana black <laughs> not spells. Not dead after all. Not the, dead the, after yeah, all. The, My bad. All the, all the one mana black, you <laughs> yeah, got Malachir you're not, Rebirth. It, it's Undying Evil. Undying for, Evil. Yeah, There's the a magic whole millennials. gamut of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then on the other end with uh, cards like Up the Beanstalk, where um, no matter how you kind of cast it, uh, you're just getting immense value. And you know it's keeping a lot of one toughness creatures at bay, uh, that with the uh, Bowmasters as well. Um, yep. So it's pretty clear something should be done. Um, we we want again as many decks as possible. We want as many cards to be an option for you as possible. And if we have all these cards that are saying don't play one toughness creatures, well, what is that keeping away? Right. One toughness creatures. Yes. Is it yeah. One toughness creatures? Okay. <laughs> great. All right. Um, okay. So let's be clear. Are there changes coming to modern on Monday? You can expect changes. Yes, there will modern. be changes in modern. On Monday. Monday. So yeah, basically, uh, we can assume my my takeaway from this is there are two cards that are going to go. One is Orcish Bowmasters, and the other is Fury. I think Orcish Bowmasters uh, discourages people from two things that are very fun in Magic: playing creatures and drawing cards. Fury discourages people from playing smaller creatures. Both of these are prohibitive cards. They they stop you from doing things that you want to do. I think Grief. Uh, as a one for one creature is not necessarily the problem. I think grief coupled with like some of the, some of the return to play effects, um, scam effects, if you will, is very good, but I think fury might be the bigger problem. Um, I think grief can probably survive on its own. I think solitude is probably fine. I think endurance is obviously okay. Subtlety, I think, is just a super fair card. I don't think it's I don't think it's worthy of a ban. Um, I think Fury is one of the biggest uh, problems in the format, and I also think Bowmasters is a big problem as well. I think Bowmasters is just ridiculously good, um, and they mentioned Bowmasters quite a bit. So, I mean, that gives me a hint that they're definitely considering doing something about Bowmasters. They did mention the One Ring, but they didn't really hyper-focus on it. Um, 
So I think the One Ring is safe. I also don't think the One Ring is super ubiquitous. I, I don't think it's everywhere. Uh, I think it's in I think it's in certain decks. I don't think every deck can just toss it in. I think that was the case when it was first uh, legal and modern. I don't think that's where we're at anymore. And you know, so I, I think next week if Monday comes around and we see a banning on Bowmasters and Fury and Modern totally good. I think I'm 100% okay with that. I think that opens up the format quite a bit. Um, see, it's funny because you, even if you look at the Yawgmoth decks, they play like one ignoble hierarch as like a fifth one mana dork. And the other mana dorks are like four gilded goose and four delighted halfling. Are those the best options for the deck? I don't know. Probably not. Maybe. Are they playing them because they both have two toughness and that gets around Bowmasters and kind of mitigates Fury. Yeah, I think so. Um, like secondarily, like if you just remove Fury with Bowmasters still in the format, are you going to be playing? Are you still is like, are cards like Ragavan, Lanawar, Lanawar Elves, Elvish Mystic, et cetera, et cetera. Are those going to be as playable? No, probably not still. Like, so it feels weird to remove Fury without also removing Orcish Bowmasters, I think. I think those two are kind of two sides of the same coin. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think those would be good choices. <laughs> I think get them out of here. I'm okay with that. And uh, as far as Pioneer goes, I think they're also looking at Pioneer. So, let's ask this directly. Will <laughs> there be Pioneer changes on December 4th? Yeah, so we've been monitoring a bunch of the ch uh, new happenings with LCI, um, but we've been looking at it for, for quite some time, even even before that, and you know, listening to uh, you know the community, um, and we want it to be fun. So you know, we've been watching the last few, uh, I believe, the regional championship events over the last couple weekends since mm -hmm. LCI has released. Um, lots going on, a lot has changed. <laughs> yeah. um, we we were we were concerned the format was just like stuck a little bit. Um, Wild Javelin Dragon came out and had a sleight of hand, mm -hmm. and we saw the uh, Phoenix, deck. Phoenix deck start coming back, rise from the ashes, as you will. Uh, so <laughs> that was pretty sweet. There was some movement going on there. And then clearly with uh, Lost Caverns, uh, the Discover decks are all over the place. Agatha, not Agatha, Amalia mm -hmm. has a, a, a cool little Wild Growth Walker combo deck. So lots happening. Um, but again, we want this to be a fun, replayable format. Losing on turn three all the time, when your opponent just casts one card, it's not that fun. Um, if you can never go over the top of your opponent, or they always have the perfect sideboard card, um, sort of out of the mono green deck, not that fun. Um, so, yes, there's going to be changes to the format. Uh, you'll have to wait until Monday. Yeah. My guess for Pioneer would be probably Geographic Appraiser. That's his name, right? Geographic Appraiser. Because I think that card is trumpeting Harnessor is just a good creature. It costs six mana. So your ability to discover five when it comes into play, you've kind of earned it because it costs it costs six. It also gets around a lot of the like glass pool mimic, um, clone nonsense that geographic appraiser is doing. Because that lets you play all these three mana clones so you can get more geographic appraisers. Trumpeting Carnosaur, if all of your cards below it cost three or less, like you're really cutting yourself off. I think Trumpeting Carnosaur is a cool card to have in the format. You can cycle it for three to kill something. It discovers, it's a big idiot. It's a cool card. I think leaving that geographic appraiser, like, I mean, it's weird to say, but like a four mana card, let's, a four mana three two that starts exiling cards from the top of your library until it hits a card that costs less than that. We've all seen it before. Um, doesn't really do anything good, anything healthy. It's just kind of a, a broken card that's begging to be exploited. And it is. So I think taking out this uncommon, it doesn't hurt a lot of the collections. Like if you spent a bunch of money on Trumpet and Carnosaurs, at one point they were like $15. At one point they were like 30 to 40 tickets on Magic Online. So like being able to still use this guy seems good. Whereas Geographic Appraiser is like a six cent card. So you're not really, like it's it's an easy, it's an easy ban, I think. Um, the other card that might need to go is Karn. And 
I'm not even 100% on Karn. Like the only deck I really, really see him in right now is the mono green deck, right? I'm not sure. I'd have to go look, but I think Karn has just, Karn is kind of like a backbone of a bunch of different archetypes, but they all have the same like 15 card sideboards. They're all one ofs. They're all artifacts that Karn can get. Like it's kind of boring and it just does this. Like it, 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 I don't know. I don't even know how I feel about Karn to be honest with you. Like, I don't know if Karn is broken, but Karn has kind of been problematic since he's been printed. He's a four of in a ton of different decks. He makes these, like, he he turns your entire sideboard into, like, a wish sideboard, like a tutor sideboard. Like, I don't know. Is Karn broken enough to be banned? I don't know. Is he is he extremely prevalent in, in the format? Yeah, kind of. I mean, he's also kind of, it's kind of the same way in modern, I, but I don't know if he's strong enough to be banned. Like, from a strength perspective, I don't know if Karn is really, like, taking over the format. He's not really. Like, a lot of the top decks don't play Karn. Like, I think the most obvious deck that plays Karn is the mono green deck, right? Like, that's that's pretty much it. So, I don't know. Yeah, those are my thoughts. Basically, uh, I, I think we're looking at Geographic Appraiser, maybe Karn in Pioneer, and then... Fury and Orcish Bowmasters in Modern. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. I'm very curious to hear it. Uh, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to Monday. Uh, looking forward to playing some Modern after Monday. Really, really curious what happens. Again, like, I think Grief without Fury is much more reasonable. I think it does open up the black-white decks to be a little more prevalent. But at least in the black-white decks, you can play your smaller creatures. It's not gatekeeping entire archetypes. You know, they're just good value creatures at that point. So I don't know. We'll see. Definitely let me know what you guys think. Really appreciate you. I'll see you next time.